Hello everyone and welcome. We are here so that we can cover example number two. Before we carry on, I just want to say a little thank you to Pietro Amoroso for reminding me that I haven't uploaded example number two. Number one, number three are there. So here's us finishing up the trifecta. A little bit of a reminder of what we're doing here. Example number two has to do with topic number five. I'm going to link that for you in the description of the video that is topic number five as well as right here or wherever else YouTube links uh, these things these days. But what we're going to do in our example today is we're going to spend a bit of time with the yada yada part of this that is we're going to figure out how to eventually come up with the fire resistance rating for the floor and the roof for this building. Okay. So we're going to spend a lot of time on the yada yada part of this on how to do it. And what we're going to do essentially as a reminder to the process altogether is we're going to go through and I recommend you do this with me. These more than 63 articles from 3.2.220 to 3.2.283. We're going to go through all of them and figure out which ones in Division B, Part 3 of the Ontario Building Code actually apply to the building in question. That's where the yada yada part of this comes into play. Once we figure out the right chunk of these articles that applies to Example 2, then we're actually going to look at them backwards. Remember this from the lecture? And we're going to find the least restrictive one. Okay, so let's get into this. Okay, in order to do the figuring out of which articles apply to this building in question, you have to classify this building. Then once we've done all that work and we figured out the correct article, we will then be able to determine the combustibility requirements and then the appropriate fire resistance readings for both the roof and the floor. And how do we figure out the classification of the building? We're going to be using the five building characteristics. Okay, you know what they are because you've reviewed the topic five, but if you haven't, you can review it again. I'm going to put it on screen anyways for you to see. The five building characteristics we're going to be using are going to be major occupancy, which is from topic two, building area, which is from topic three, building height, which is from topic three as well, also, how many streets this building is facing. And lastly, whether or not this building is sprinklered or not. So whether or not it has sprinklers. So for this example, number two, the details are as follows. We know that it's an office type building. So doing things properly, this tells us it's a D occupancy. We know that the building area is 2,400 meters squared. We know that the building height is six stories, right? Because according to the building code, the building height is not a measurement, but it's the number of stories. How many streets it's facing? Well, you can see it in the image right here, but just as a reminder, it's facing two streets. And example number two, are there sprinklers or no sprinklers? In this case, there are no sprinklers. It's unsprinklered, okay? Now let's move on. Now that we know that the major occupancy is D, because this is an office building, we know that out of all of those of more than 83 articles that were mentioned earlier on, we actually have to look at only these ones. So starting at 3.2.249, all the way but not past 3.2.256. Those are the only ones that apply to D occupancies. How did I find them? I looked through all of them, all of them, more than 83 of them, and found that these were the only ones that dealt with the office. Okay. So as we're going through this, how do we know which one to pick? Well, that's where my reminder of doing things backwards comes into play. We're going to start with the last one, 56, and we're going to work backwards until we find the least restrictive it applies to our building right here. Okay, so let's do that. I'm going to clean things up on the screen a little bit. 
Up here, I'm going to put all the information relating to our building. And on this side, I'll go through the work of going through all the articles that pertain, starting with Article 3.2.256. You should be looking at these same articles as I am, so you're welcome to pause to catch up. Okay, does 3.2.256 apply? Well, no, it doesn't, because 3.2.256 only deals with buildings that are up to two stories and sprinklered. Our building has six stories, so right away, no good. Let's move on to the next one, 3.2.255. Does that apply? No, because it requires, that is 55, it only requires two stories. Our building still five, uh, six stories, right? So we reject that. How about we move on to 54? That too doesn't work, right? Because 54 is up to three stories and our building has six stories right here. So we go through a few bunch more. I skip them because they're no good. And I'm going backwards until I reach this one here, 3.2.250A. It says in the title, maximum six stories plus sprinklered plus combustible construction. Is that applicable to our building? Well, maximum six stories works because our building is six stories. But the sprinkler part of it does not work because our building is unsprinklered. Okay, so we skip that. 50A is not it. Let's watch the next one. 50, 3.2.250 says maximum six stories right here. So that's a maybe. It could be it, right? Because our building has six stories. So let's dive into this specific article. Let's look at this. What does it have to say? Well, I'm going to reproduce it on screen for you. So don't worry if I disappear. I'm still here. I'm just talking behind the portion of the building code I put on screen, which is this right here. As you can see, this here is a reproduction of Article 3.2.250. The way that you read anything in the building code when you reach it is you always start at the very beginning. So in this case, it's sentence one, which specifically states that a building is classified as group D. Uh, a building classified as group D is permitted to conform with sentence two, provided it meets these two um, clauses. So the first one is that it's not more than six stories in building height which is okay, that's what we have right here, six stories, good, check. The second one is that it conf com uh, conforms with the requirements in the table below, that's table 3.2.250. Okay, so that's a good thing because that's what we're gonna do. If what we have in this table uh, complies with the requirements of our example, then that's okay. So let's move on to looking at this table, table 3. 2.250. What this table contains basically is the maximum allowed building area depending on the number of stories our building has. So we have to go find first of all how many stories our building has. Our building has six stories so we find that in the table right here six stories. Then we have to find the number of streets that our building has. Our building has two streets so we have to find that in the table as well. And where, where those two meet will tell us the maximum allowed area. Look at that. Good news. 3,000 square meters. That is more than 2,400 square meters, which means that our building is allowed to work within the confines of this article, of this sentence, and of this table. So we're now allowed to move on to sentence number two okay because we met all the requirements in sentence number one so what this article basically says is that now that sentence number one has been uh, found to be acceptable this building shall be of non-combustible construction so that's the first requirement we find and then look at this right here and here we then also find the requirements for the fire resistance rating for the floor and the roof. They are one hour each, a minimum of one hour each, or as it said here, not less than one hour each. That's great news 
because that means that we've solved our example. And that's what we're going to do now. We're going to wrap things up. And here on this portion of the screen, I'm going to put my final answer. Okay. What we find from my final for this question is that we have, first of all, figured out through doing all the yada, 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 right? The five building characteristics that the appropriate article is going to be 3.2.250. Also, what we have found is that then this building right here, this example, shall conform with the requirements of 3.2.252, okay? Sentence number two, which means that it has to be of non-combustible construction. Furthermore, to figure out then what the fire resistance readiness of the floor and of the roof, what we found is that the floor shall not be less than one hour fire resistance rating according to clause 3.2.252A and the roof shall have a fire resistance rating not less than one hour according to clause 3.2.252C. That's it. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, I want you to consider this because it's important. Please consider the following. These questions are tough, especially when you've never done them before. And that's where practice comes into play. Okay, doing these many times, homework, if you will. Okay, I ran you through this fairly easily because I've done many of them. So I know exactly what process to follow. You can follow my same process or not. But don't forget, if you're finding this tough, it's simply because you're new at it, it's something new for you, and you simply need more practice, which is completely normal. Okay? Folks, that's it. I want to thank you so much for your time. Thank you for being here. Have a lovely day and take care.